Hi folks, this is Ali Nase, and I wanted to make this video because so many of you had contacted me over the past few months and wanted me to share my opinions regarding a recent video documentary questioning the safety of root canal therapy. As a root canal specialist and a patient myself, this is obviously an area that I care a lot about and I want to make sure that I address everyone's questions and concerns on this very important topic. After all, I've had a couple of root canals myself and I have even done a bunch of root canal procedures on my parents and close family members throughout the years. So this, as you can imagine, is more than just being an expert and an educator. I care about the health and safety uh, of my own uh, Mouth, as well as that of my loved ones and family members. So speaking of clinical work, over the past three decades of my clinical and academic career in dentistry, I've completed over 25,000 root canal procedures here in downtown Boston. And I think that I can speak of some level of experience in this area with long-term follow-ups of my own patients. In fact, let me first and foremost share my longest root canal follow-up with you, my own tooth. I had root canal therapy on this tooth in 1990 when I was just a dental student and shortly before I performed my very first root canal procedure myself. The tooth has now been in my mouth serving me for about 30 years. Of course, I do my part of brushing and flossing uh, every day and also stay away from chewing gravel and all kinds of hard stuff, which is an important part of maintaining your healthy dentition beyond the dental chair. Recently, I took a high resolution CBCT of my tooth to check the status of the surrounding bone. And I'm happy to report that everything looks normal after 30 years of service and I feel completely healthy. So based on my personal experience, root canal therapy works and that the burden of proof now is really on the shoulder of opponents of this procedure to prove me wrong. In this video, I want to address a couple of main claims that the opponents of this procedure make and see if I can adequately address them for you. There are basically two main claims in this recent film for this procedure that has been made. One claim is that root canal treated tooth is a dead tooth and there is no other place in the body where a dead tissue or an organ is retained. And then the second claim is that root canal therapy is the main cause of heart disease or heart attacks here in America. Now, I've even thrown in this uh, gem of all time, the 2012 internet meme by Mercola, that 97% of terminally ill cancer patients have had root canal therapy. So let's see if we can address that. That meme by Mercola was probably retweeted more frequently than the Mayan apocalypse of 2012. At the end of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my own two cents about the misunderstandings surrounding this procedure and whether root canal therapy as a procedure is in fact safe or less safe than any other medical procedure such as an appendectomy. Also attaching a number of resources and documents for download below this video or links where you can get them uh, and download them for your perusal if you're interested in more information in this area. So please take a look at these documents on uh, our website, everybledendo.com. Before we get into the claims, I also wanna do a very short review uh, for those non-dentists watching this video, in order to get everyone up to speed understanding some of the terms such as what is a root canal and what is root canal therapy. And this way, my goal is you can hopefully make sure everyone is adequately following and understanding the terms that I'm using. To simplify as much as I can, a tooth is considered an organ. And like any other organ, it's made up of tissues. And each tissue, as you know, is made up of a bunch of cells. So that's the level of organization in these organ tissue and cells uh, component of the human body. So the human tooth is then made up of four distinct biological tissues, enamel, dentin, pulp, and cementum. And together, these tissues make up the tooth organ. We're gonna talk about this more later. The enamel, dentin, and pulp complex make up the crown portion that you see above the gum line, and the pulp and dentin and cementum make up the root portion below the gum line that anchors the crown into the jawbone. In the middle of each root of your teeth, there is a hair-thin space called root canal space where pulp tissue resides. Due to decay, cracks, or trauma, regular microbes from the saliva can get into the space and cause inflammation of the pulp tissue 
and symptoms of a toothache that is associated with what we call root canal infection. At this point, the problem is irreversible and we can generally have two options to address the disease process here. We can either remove the whole tooth in order to get rid of the inflamed tissues that are inside the tooth, or what we can do is we can remove the inflamed tissues, which is the pulp tissue, from inside the tooth and the root canal space in order to address the source of the symptoms. And this way, preserve the tooth organ itself. So this procedure by which we do that is called root canal therapy. All right, that's pretty simple. During your root canal procedure, we access the root canal space through making a little opening through the top of the tooth, remove the content of this root canal space, which is the inflamed pulp tissue, and then we then disinfect the remaining space to make sure we get rid of the bacteria and fill the space that we have emptied out with a safe and biocompatible filler material. After we do that, we seal the space with a filling, the, you know, the, the access preparation on top with a filling or place a crown on top of the tooth, which is a shell that helps hold the tooth together in order to make the remaining tooth structure stronger. An important detail that is often misunderstood by the public is that once the space inside the tooth is contaminated by microbes in the saliva, the main objective is to prevent this contamination from spreading outside the tooth and into the jawbone. So that's essentially the goal of all root canal therapy, confining, removing, and preventing spread of infection to the areas beyond the root and into the bone by sealing the root canal space closed completely with the filling material. And success is then defined as preserving the health of the bone surrounding the root at the root end. So even if there are any remaining microbes sealed inside the tooth after the procedure, this doesn't matter or pose any problems as long as the microbes do not find a path to the outside of the tooth. Now, why is this not a problem? Well, there is already a sea of bacteria above the gum normally, so that all that has happened now is the outside enamel barrier has now been extended to the end of the root after this procedure, and the inside of the tooth is now considered part of the outside world. That's a, a interesting distinction. So in summary, the protection barrier has been moved from the surface of the tooth, which was previously the enamel substance of the tooth, enamel tissue, if you will, to the root end as the root canal filling material. That's all that's happened. And speaking of the enamel, let's go back to the earlier point about the four types of tissues that make up the tooth organ. As we mentioned, in a mature tooth, enamel and dentin are just mineral deposits laid down by cells, much like the outer layer of our skin, hair, our nail uh, growth, and all of that stuff beyond the nail bed is considered dead structure because they don't really have any cells themselves. They simply are mineralized deposits. The pulp and cementum, however, contain cells inside and just on the surrounding part of the root. So you can immediately recognize that the first claim about retaining a dead organ is on shady ground as teeth after root canal therapy still contain live cells from the cementum portion of the root, as well as periodontal ligament cells. Furthermore, normal mature teeth, even before they've had root canal therapy, are also composed of dead mineral deposits throughout our life. And that's an interesting and important distinction. Every tooth in our mouth has dead and living portions under normal circumstances. And the claim of retaining a dead organ in the body is simply incorrect. Of course, part of this misunderstanding is really the dentist's own fault as we sometimes use incorrect terms like dead versus alive to refer to a tooth's painful sensation or response to thermal stimulus. This is partially the source of this confusion as many dentists wrongly use this colloquial term to explain an otherwise abstract procedure to lay persons, patients, you know. Otherwise, a healthy, vital tooth contains non-living parts and a root canal treated tooth contains living parts. So a root canal treated tooth is not dead. It only lacks pulpal cells, that's all. When we say it's dead, we're really talking about a lack of painful sensation from it. So how about the second claim that root canal therapy is the cause of heart disease? Well, this of course is the belief of only one doctor shown in this video documentary. Otherwise, 
Almost every medical practitioner knows that smoking, diabetes, high blood pressure, stress, diet, and lifestyles are the scientifically proven factors, and the American Heart Association does not even list root canal therapy as a potential cause. What has been implicated with both gum and root canal disease is a correlation with coronary heart disease, not a causal factor. So one is not causing the other, but both problems coexist at the same time. Basically, root canals cause heart disease the same way that heart disease would cause root canals. You see that? It's just a correlation, not a causation. For example, many smokers and diabetics end up having gum disease and also end up needing root canal therapy for the same dietary and neglect problems that cause diabetes and, and heart disease and, and gum disease and so on. So the fact is that heart disease is present along the side of gum disease and root canal disease is not really a cause and effect. The real cause is the associated common lifestyle and biological factors that often cause both diseases. Many opponents of this procedure quote the work of Dr. Weston Price, calling him the preeminent expert in the field of endodontics. And while Dr. Weston was a great clinician and dietitian, he lived and published his work about root canal therapy in 1920s, exactly 100 years ago. Now, the Roaring Twenties are well known for great jazz music, you know, urban growth and the prohibition. But one thing that they were not really known for was great advances in dentistry and root canal therapy, as you can imagine. In fact, during this time, the high-speed drill was not even invented. Dentists were not wearing gloves. Uh, using a rubber dam isolation. Novocaine wasn't even yet invented, and the source of root canal success and failure was still a nebulous concept. It wasn't clear. There was no textbook of root canal therapy published until 1948. So just imagine a dentist trying to do a root canal procedure on a tooth without anesthesia, gloves, or a proper drill or instruments at that time. You can get a better root canal uh, procedure today in the remote areas of the Amazon rainforest than you could get 100 years ago. So no wonder Dr. Price did not believe in root canal therapy and saw a high failure rate and infection. Frankly, under similar standards, I wouldn't have, I would have probably said the same thing. The fact of the matter is that what we refer to as the average root canal procedure in the 1920s was frankly unrecognizable compared to what modern and highly sophisticated procedure we perform today. I mean, if I quoted a famous surgeon in the 1920s who slammed open heart surgery or even appendectomy as an impossible uh, procedure based on his research at the time, I think we would all find it irrelevant to today's cardiac surgical procedures or abdominal surgical procedures that are done today. Modern technology has clearly addressed many of these shortcomings and the modern root canal procedure is also incomparable to what was happening back then during the time of Dr. Weston Price. We have a far better understanding of this procedure and have better techniques in imaging and in disinfection. We've had thousands of studies published since Dr. Weston Price work and the procedure today is nothing resembling what he saw during his time. Even though this procedure has a high success rate, it's obviously still a sophisticated and a skill-based procedure, and we have to keep that in mind. Like any surgical procedure, root canal therapy is a service and not a commodity. Like a shirt or a hat that you can buy from a premium retail store or get the very exact same shirt or hat from a discount store at a big discount. Here's me holding the exact same shirt from two different department stores. Same thing, right? But when it comes to a sophisticated procedure requiring surgical skills and a whole bunch of technology, there is clearly a difference between two similarly named procedures. So expertise and training matters as much, if not more, than technological advances. There are plenty of botched dental or medical procedures and root canals are clearly a no exception. As a consumer, we all need to do our research and find qualified practitioners to render our care at an excellent quality of care. Now, the good news is that 
For the most part, single-rooted front teeth and some back teeth are relatively simple to perform and can be performed effectively by well-trained restorative dentists. However, more complicated molar teeth with multiple canals and complex anatomy do require additional tools such as an operating microscope and other microsurgical techniques. And uh, those should really ideally be done by a specialist uh, or an expert, which is called an endodontist. You can find a list of root canal specialists in your area by looking at the American Association of Endodontists members list. Go to aae.org. This leads me to another important thing that I wanted to say, and that's the importance of follow-up and recall. When root canal therapy is done, a regimen of recall is recommended after treatment. So your endodontist or your uh, restorative dentist can confirm healing after root canal therapy has been done. And this is often several months after the procedure is done. It's critical that you follow up and return for this examination date so that the efficacy of the treatment can be confirmed. As I mentioned, a small percentage of root canal therapy procedures require a little bit of touch-up and follow-up after the procedure has been completed in order to eradicate all disease. Finally, the last thing that I want to say, keep in mind that the alternative to root canal therapy is tooth loss. Every medical procedure has a success and a failure rate. The goal of dentistry is to save our dentition as long as possible. Eventually, like the rest of our body, we all age, unfortunately, and run into problems. So pulling our teeth unnecessarily or prematurely in fear of losing them is like committing suicide prematurely to avoid death. The replacement options for these missing teeth are either implants, bridges, or dentures. Now, a bridge will increase the chances of the abutment teeth requiring root canal therapy, and implants have also similar success rates than root canals and are subject to the same holistic criticism by the same so-called holistic doctors. Essentially, these types of doctors recommend extraction and dentures. Unfortunately, any person wearing dentures can certify that they feel like a pair of shoes in your mouth and they clearly don't do so many wonders for your social life. As far as I'm concerned, losing an organ because of this type of misinformation by these so-called holistic doctors is tantamount to a crime against humanity. The other internet meme about 97% of terminally ill cancer patients which have had root canal therapy was investigated in detail. It turns out that there is really no documented scientific source to this claim, and there is nothing in the literature that says this. This is merely hearsay observation from a German doctor called Joseph Eisel during World War II, who was again using antiquated and anecdotal data on this specific procedure. This is why correlation observations are generally meaningless and scientifically controlled studies are needed to determine cause and effect when it comes to medical procedures. 97% of cancer patients have had a lot of things in common. They've also had fillings, they've used toothpaste, they've, had, they've all eaten a variety of foods. Uh, I don't know. The, the mere correlation can never be a causation. If correlation is enough, holistic doctors should also take note of the 2003 World Health Organization report where people with missing teeth were found to have a shorter lifespan than people that had uh, teeth. And that's pretty interesting. So I don't know how would holistic doctors explain that correlation. Anyway, at the end, all of us make decisions that best fit our personalities. And as long as we make our decisions in an informed manner, rather than being swayed by charlatans and snake oil salesmen, we can live with our decisions and be happy about it. For me personally, I'm happy that I chose to keep my tooth. This has served me now so well over the past 30 years years. Teeth are organs, and I would have done the same thing if it had been my finger. I think that we need to respect our teeth more and take better care of them. And that's really all that I want to say about that. Have a wonderful day, and oh, don't forget to brush and floss, rinse and repeat every day.